Are you struggling to learn something new or to study? Today we are going to talk about my favorite brain-based ways to learn and to study. So let's start with some tried, test and true learning techniques. As a person who spent a lot of years in school, I had to perfect my skill at learning. Um, and I had to try all kinds of different ways to try to get to learn faster and better and more effectively because it really mattered for my marks. Now, as a professor, I care a lot about how my students go about learning, what it is they need to do to ensure that they actually encode the information deeply. And so first, I want to start off by talking about some of the tried, tested, and true techniques you can use to learn better. The first tip for learning better is to go to a quiet place. I mean, this might seem obvious, but a lot of the places that we sometimes try to study, like at home or in the dormitory or maybe in the office, those places can be fraught with distractions and with noise. And so what I want you to do is find a quiet place, somewhere that you feel comfortable and that you are going to be able to actually focus on the information that you're focused on. So that's the first piece, is get to a quiet place. The next piece of advice, which is again corroborated by the brain science research but is hard to do, is to leave your phone at home. What all the research shows is that even if your mobile device is off, not receiving or transmitting, it is in fact serving as a distraction. It's as if you're sharing part of your brain with your mobile device and therefore you're not able to actually focus on the information at hand. So if you want to learn something better, leave your mobile device at least, if not at home, outside of the room that you're in. The next learning technique that really helps with learning is to take notes by hand. In today's day and age, don't we all have a laptop? It's so much easier to type, right? That's the point. Typing, because it is so much easier, actually decreases our deep encoding of information. And so, what brain scientists have shown is that people who take notes by hand actually ingrain the information more deeply in neural networks, and later, when they're asked to remember, they can. And so what we see is both retention and learning go up when what you do is you take notes by hand. The next tip is to make sure that you set aside specific time for learning. Whether you're studying for the real estate license or for a university course, either way, what you need to do is set aside specific time. In fact, researchers have found that what you should do is set aside chunks of time with known breaks so that in that chunk of time, you're learning something very specific. If what you do is give yourself a certain amount of time that it will take to learn that and then get up and do something else, you will actually encode this information more deeply. We're not totally sure how this works, but it also includes the fact that the break would in fact serve to help with getting that information into your neural networks. The next piece of advice or insight from the research is this. Learning is hard. If it's easy, everyone would do it. And the truth is, is that what you should be feeling is in fact slightly uncomfortable. Sometimes people ask me, you know, I've been trying to learn something new, I'm really struggling, is that normal? Yes. In fact, you should be quite uncomfortable. Don't underestimate how hard learning is. Learning can take up to 40% of all the oxygen you breathe in, all of the calories you put in your mouth. It's really an energetically and cognitively expensive thing to do. So don't underestimate how hard learning really is. The next thing or the next tip for how to learn better is this. If it's possible, there's something called context specific effects that take place especially in learning that mean that when, as an example, you learn something in a particular environment, it's a lot easier then to produce that same information again later in that same environment. Scientists did this with a bunch of people under the water, as an example, where they would learn in their scuba gear, and then later, recall was actually much easier when they were back in their scuba gear. Here's how you can use this. If, as an example, you know that you are about to take a test or you are about to be called to action with some known skill or learning, if you can study that information in that environment, that would be really helpful. Now, failing that, here is what I used to do. Knowing that I really wanted to get a lot of good grades, 
I used to envision myself learning and studying in the exam room. Now, I wasn't in the exam room, I was in the library, but I would just picture the fact that I was in the exam room so that when I got back to that exam room or when I was finally in the exam room taking the exam, it wasn't my brain's first rodeo. It wasn't the first time my brain felt like I was in that environment. In fact, it felt like what we call context-specific learning. It felt like I could now retrieve the information really readily because this is where I'd learned it. The second last piece of really important advice, and this is something that is, again, counterintuitive. I often talk to teachers groups, and as a professor myself, I don't always love this fact, but here's what it is. Learning does not take place in the classroom. It, in fact, probably doesn't take place in the library. Learning takes place in the bedroom. What do I mean by that? Well. As you're sleeping and dreaming, your neural networks are renegotiating. They're taking information from the day and they're assimilating them into the neural networks of knowledge that you have that are existing. So if you want to learn more, I want you to actually sleep more. And what you will find is that retention goes up. Here's the other thing. When you're forced to learn or you're in an environment where the learning curve is steep, what you will notice is that you're much more tired because it's fatiguing, but that you need a lot more sleep. And so over time, if you feel as though you do need more sleep, it's likely that you're doing a lot of learning. Let me tell you a story. When I was going to school, which was many years of going to school, I had a professor who used to tell us that if we slept with our textbook under our pillow, that it, the information would osmotically get into our brains and we would do better on the test. Well, years later, I was studying neuroscience and psychology, and I went back to him and I said, you know, Dr. Day, I know that to be false. There's no way information was osmotically getting into our brains. And he said, I know, and as do you, what I wanted you to do was put down the textbook and get more sleep. The final piece of advice for how to increase and level up your ability to learn is, as the title says, it's to teach the information. We don't know exactly why this is true, but if you learn information so that you have to teach it later, you actually encode it more deeply and more broadly. So next time you're forced to learn something or next time you really want to learn something well, think about reteaching it to somebody. And what's interesting is you won't just encode it deeper, you'll actually remember more of the details, you'll actually encode it more broadly, which is to say that you will put more of that information in more neural networks. As you have more neural networks that also have that information embedded, almost like a redundancy, it becomes easier to access that information later. If you are a student, here's how to use this. And I used to do this when I was studying all of the time. And that's this. Even though probably nobody wanted to know about rapid mitotic division in cells, what I used to do was teach the information either to the wall or to anybody who would listen. And so I'm sure my family and friends at the time got really bored of hearing about the ins and outs of neuroscience, psychology, and biology. But what it helped with was my feeling like I had to reteach the information, which helped me learn the information that much better. So if you really want to learn something deeply, learn it so as to be able to reteach it, not just to know it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. Now go and sleep and grain that into your neural networks. We'll see you next time.